Hello, Gus. How are you doing today? Oh, good, good. Looks like you've got a beautiful uh, scene here to paint. Yeah, it's my favorite subject, architectural themes. Architectural themes. Um, and all right, so you're going to be painting this building over here. Yeah. Yes, Gus, you do very well with architecture. Um, well, how did you get into painting? Well, I've been painting all my life. Okay. Uh, I have memories of sketching and doodling and drawing as far back as when I was three years old. And uh, I have a degree in uh, fine arts and a degree in industrial design. Um, originally, I wanted to be an art teacher, but uh, financial aspects and raising a family took over, and uh, I opted to for industrial design. Worked in the industry for about 20 years. Have many uh, U.S. and international patents, uh, but all the while I've always been painting on weekends and spare time and. Uh, it came to a point where uh, I began to feel that uh, maybe it would be a great idea to live my by, by my brush alone. But there was always, you know, uh, issues of uh, raising kids, putting them through college, and all of that. But uh, in 1990, I made a decision to go to fine art full-time and uh, I haven't regretted yet. Oh, great. Yeah. It, has and it, provide, it has provided me with a very good living and uh, a tremendous amount of pleasure. Wow. So that's that's uh, sounds like a <clears throat> fulfilling life when you have all that put together. Yeah. Yeah. And you chose watercolors over I, other mediums. I painted uh, with all, all types of all, all mediums. I started with oils, and uh, then went to pastels. Uh, then when we did the acrylics, and I used to do a very large abstract paintings. Um, but gradually, I started moving more towards uh, more realistic paintings. And uh, one of the jobs that I had was at uh, Hallmark Cards, uh, designing store interiors and displays. Oh. And uh, I, I met quite a few artists oh, no. there, okay. and some many of which were uh, watercolor painters. And that's how I got hooked into watercolors. Oh, that is so neat. I just love hearing this history. <laughs> that is fantastic. And uh, I, I love what I call it. It's a very, very, very one, nice medium. I, um, like, as I said, I painted with all mediums, but what I call it is the one that excites me the most. Yeah. It's, and why would that be? It's very versatile, easy to transport. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it, it's, I like the challenge of uh, the spontaneous aspect of the of the medium. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that uh, you know, with other mediums, especially oil and acrylics, you know, you don't like something, you just scrape it off and put some white and go over it. Uh huh. With colors, so you have to do a lot of planning <clears throat> ahead of time. Got to think all the time. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So, and your watercolors are beautiful. Thank you. Um, could you give us your website so we can yeah, look at them? www.aafineart.com. Aafineart.com. Arts with an S. S, S dot yeah, com. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we will add that. And um, is there any specific art tip that you would like to share? Yes. Anyway, okay. Uh, if you're a studio painter, Strongly suggest that you, uh, uh, if you are primarily a studio painter, strongly suggest that you plan air painting because you learn a lot uh, from the effects of the light, the atmospheric perspective, and um, 
just just the plain enjoyment of reproducing something that you see in uh, in nature, as opposed to sitting at a table at home uh, painting from a photograph. Mm -hmm. uh, the photographs are good, uh, especially nowadays with the, with the advent of computers and iPads and iPhones. But uh, you do not; they do not give you the the feel and the sense of atmospheric perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, everything kind of tends to look kind of flat in a photograph. Uh, when you're painting and from nature, it's an entirely different mm -hmm. story. So. so much, well, and I just love your your setup here. Your yeah, it's something stuff. I constructed myself. It's it's, it's a photographer's. Um, uh, east, uh, tripod, tripod. Mm -hmm. and then I built this other part from from odds and ends. And this part was given to me by Mark. You remember Mark? Yes. He moved to Wisconsin, uh -huh. and it works really well. It sure does. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. I will check on your You're painting welcome. later. All right. Beautiful day right here. Yes, it is a beautiful day, isn't it? Yes. Yes, and I see you found a place along the river to paint. Yes. Can you tell me your name? My name is John Cray. Uh, I'm from New York. Uh, I was an art and graphic artist teacher for 30 years. Um, now retired, now able to paint uh, full time. Uh, it's my first time out this season uh, with the group for the winter, for the fall. Uh, but I'm loving getting out. Isn't it wonderful? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Good things happen when you get out of the studio. Yes, it does. You know? um, but I'm enjoying this. Uh, I'm down here full time. So uh, I'm trying to discover Florida. Uh -huh. Paint a completely different way, change the yes. style, everything. Yes. So uh, it's, again, it's, been, it's a lot of fun. Yes, that's great. And um, what have you got going here? You're well, working with oils. Yes, uh, I, I blocked in. I, uh, I'm a, what they call a form painter. I paint in forms. So I block in my colors and my shapes to see, and I'm trying to start lively. Uh, my goal is to be very thin and very, uh, uh, how would I say, spontaneous with the paint, uh, show the brush strokes. So now I'm layering. It's like, you know, this is like building a, a food dish. You're going to layer it on top of mm -hmm. layers. Mm -hmm. And part of the uh, challenge is to see the layers, to see how you will build the painting uh -huh. uh, while trying to do that in only three hours. So. Yes. You know, yeah. But uh, you know, but a great it's a you know, it's a great way to learn. It's the only really way to learn. Uh, there's yeah. a rule that you can learn a lot by working on photographs, but you can work a whole learn a whole lot more if you work from life. Yeah. So getting out here is uh, uh, is 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 how you really uh, you know learn how to paint. You really get to see how the light interacts and yes. plays with things. And the stimulation, and your eyes see more. I mean, a pho photograph only has 12 layers of colors. Our eyes have hundreds of uh, values in there. So we see more. And our colors lively, liven up and everything just by being outside. Yeah. And do you think that once you learn outside that you can do better from a photograph, Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. My uh, way of painting is I paint outside. Mm -hmm. And then I will also bring in and sometimes do larger paintings in the studio, mm -hmm. do things like that. Uh, I like to match or mix my outdoor and my indoor painting. Uh -huh. But you're right. Along with a little imagination. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and sometimes you learn things from a scene. Sometimes when I leave here, I feel like I still have another painting here because I've seen so much. Yeah. So a lot of times you get inspired to want to do another one or come back to the same location and do a bigger one or, or something else. Yeah. So it's a learning process. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And something uh, that is good for our minds. Yeah. Yes. And I like your little setup here too. Yeah, this is not bad. I went. It's I went great. smaller. Yes. I used to have. A, I used oh. to have the same hers. I have the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's too big. I needed to get smaller. Yeah, I need to get smaller too. And what is this one called? This is the the finest box you can buy. It's called Open M. Open M. They're made, I think, in uh, Wisconsin or Michigan. Okay. They are, or maybe Minnesota, they are the finest box. They're all made out of black walnut. Okay. They're very delicate. And but this they're is That's, uh, a wood yes, down below? Yes, Okay. And they, they, they make very, very nice equipment. Now, um, thank you so much for oh, no, um, your, your help with this. Now, do you, have a, a, do you have a website? That would be jcraygh.com. 
Okay, so and actually, if you Google my name, you'll probably get a zillion pictures of things that have loaded <laughs> up out there so far. So say it once more. Spell it out. C R E A G H Cray. Just Cray yes. or the Cray. Uh, it's J Cray is the website. J Cray dot com. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. You're welcome. Enjoy your day. And came back and said, "I could do a bigger one of that." Yeah. Okay. Oh, with the picture on the front. Let's see. Love that. Love old red trucks. Oh, yeah. They make great subjects. Here we are at this painter. And she's gotten quite a ways here. Um, she's got her, her um, painting all blocked out. And what's your name? Hi, uh, Susan Ritter. Susan Ritter. Hey, and where are you from? I am Susan? actually uh, from Ohio and Venice. Yeah. So I only live about 10 minutes from here. Okay. And this is one of nice. my favorite places to paint because there's some such nice scenes along the Maniaca River. Yeah. And such as this palm that's uh, reaching out into uh, this scene. And um, the adjoining limb here, this kind of a dead palm limb, I guess, is casting an interesting shadow across underneath um, this reaching palm. So what I've done here is basically kind of squinted in blocked in, this is my block in phase. I've blocked in um, the scene. And uh, you pick three to five simple shapes. This is a shape, the palm tree is a shape, the water is a shape, this palm bush out in the water is a shape. This is a shape, you keep your shapes very simple at the block end stage. Notice I'm not trying to draw little trees in the background or anything. I'm just going for the values and the colors that I'm seeing when I squint at the scene and then when I squint at my painting as well um, to see, to check myself. And um, one thing is when you're painting water, you go up and down, you don't go across unless it's real shallow water. So that's why you see my brush strokes going up and down. Okay. And uh, one of the things I was saying earlier is that when it gets to this stage, it's kind of hard to, uh, you want to be careful not to um, lose your looseness mm -hmm. and start putting in too much detail. And so that's the challenge now that it's pretty much blocked in. Um, I'm, I'm liking the block in, it's not quite finished, but I don't want to get it too detailed, but I, on the other hand, it's got a lot that I want to put in it. Um, what I'm especially looking forward to putting in it is the glisten, glistening or shine on the water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The sun, it's a beautiful day, so oh my, I want to look at that capitalize on that wow. nice pretty blue water and those uh, dots out in the water, plus uh, the darks in the light greens of the palms, how the sun is getting on the tips of those palms. So we'll see. Check with me later. We'll I will. How... We'll come back later. And I really appreciate um, sure. the tips that you have. You and want to stand here. You are. Where I um, am. And then you can get the scene and the painting all yeah, at once. Yeah, kind of getting it over there. You get the idea of what yep. I'm doing. Yep. Very nice. Um. Yeah, I admire your paintings, and I know that you yeah. win a lot of uh, awards. Sure. And you, you like to do Sometimes architecture, I do. and I love your I do love architecture. Love your homes. You paint the cutest little houses. <laughs> um, uh, I do. I'm especially drawn to architecture. I, mm -hmm. I can't tell you why. Uh, mm -hmm. It just it um, has a personality all its own. Uh, they they're nostalgic to me a mm -hmm. little bit, and uh, I think uh, that's part of. Um, why I like to paint homes. Mm -hmm. you know, they remind me of my childhood. Maybe. Where? Um, and, uh, how long have you been painting? Uh, I've been painting, oh gosh, since my 20s really, but um, really took it up more in uh, when I retired. I'm a, actually a school counselor by profession. Okay. Now I'm an artist by profession. Right. So I great. didn't really retire. I just changed. <laughs> changed careers. Changed pr professions. There yeah. we go. I think everybody who paints is a, is a professional in my mind. Yeah. No, I heard so that. you have a website, don't you? I do. It's Susan Bunce, B-U-N-C-E, Ritter, 
fineart.com. Okay, Susan Bunce Ritter, fineart.com. Okay, right. we yeah. will put that down for yeah. you. Actually, if you just Google Susan Ritter, it should come up too. Okay, thank you. Because <laughs> I know that's a mouthful. All righty, thanks. Uh huh. It's getting those brights in there. Yeah, cord of pulley. Yes, it is. <laughs> Compared to to oh. New York and oh yeah, those trees are pieces of cake after this. Yeah, you know. They, yeah. They, but that's the character down here. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to learn how to paint a palm. Yes. You know. <laughs> Well, also, sure too, the do. colors are different. They're a little livelier, a little mm -hmm. more robust. So in that sense, you know, they're pretty good. When I was painting up in North Carolina, I had to figure out the mountains. I was asking a painting buddy up there, well, I can't figure out the color of the mountains. He said, it's the ocean. It's like the ocean, you that's know? It, that's right. That's the right. Blue. Oh, mountains are a piece of cake compared to Although, if you're in, like, the Smoky Mountains or the Blue Ridge. Yes, the Blue Ridge. Oh, that's was tough. It. Yeah, that was because tough. Because the very <laughs> subtle differences between yeah. the furthest and the, and the closest. Yeah, I know, remember like in Vermont and New York, there was almost like a purple hue. Yes. But in the Smokies, you have to think more blue. Yes. And, but, you, but that's how you learn atmospheric effects. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, your values and stuff like that. So they're a lot of fun. I've been up there. I, I, uh, I did a lot of paintings up in the Smokies. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, that was, that was a great trip. Yep. All right. Well, okay. see you later. Yes. suggest here is uh, take this color, some of the colors, some of this or yellows and oranges, uh -huh. and, uh, and add a little bit of these colors here, so that uh, you, I, you know, you, I, I gather this would be your focal area, but yeah. you want to have a little bit more color unity in the, in the painting, oh, so okay. just take some of this and put it here or there. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the only suggestion that I have is... Uh, uh, Add a little bit more blue or some a little bit of blue and brown to the water, okay? But leave some of the whites. I think those whites that you have give that little sparkle and it's really, really good. Um, Is there more of... Take some uh, brighter red and just give it a little touch there. The other thing that I suggest is take a, a, a fine uh, brush and just pick up some pristine white and give it a few vertical strokes for the connection of the roof with the boat. And that would be easy to do with oil, yeah. so it's going to dry. Yeah. Other than that, like the accent just wiped it off. Nice job. Yeah, very nice. Nice, very nice. It has a nice atmosphere. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. Nice. Yeah. Very good. Nice colors, too, throughout. Um, of course, is this? You did a great job with the tree, the construction of the of the structure of the tree. It's really good. Um, you're not you're not finished, right? No. Okay. Uh, when you uh, when, when, when you finish, I would su I suggest that <clears throat> take some. Um, you already started doing putting some highlights on yeah, the branches. Yeah, it needs it needs. You know, do a little bit more of the highlights, and bring some of the blue in some areas in the background too. And uh, I, I know what you were trying to do here, but I would tone down, tone down some of that yellow in the in the in the, in the, in the foliage. Just mm -hmm. tone it down a little bit, not too much. Um,